Google's anti-gravity just released. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use it, how to set it up on your local machine. And I'm also gonna show you three major features that you need to know if you're using anti-gravity here to do vibe coding. So first thing first, I'm gonna show you the one of the feature, which is the agent manager. You can think of it like a orchestrator that orchestrate multiple air agents running at your same times inside of your coding IDE. So that we're not wasting any time for our vibe coding here. And the second feature is the browser agents. This will basically help us to navigate to our applications and examine it and also help us to figure out what can we improve for application. And lastly, I also want to show you is the ability to have multiple models inside of our coding editor. For example, we're not limited to just the Gemini models you can see here. We also have the ability to use cloud models, the GPT models, any models we like. Okay, so pretty much these are the three main features that I'm gonna show you for anti-gravity. And I'm also gonna show you the development workflow that I'm gonna follow to make sure that we're getting the highest accuracy for using Google anti-gravity for the lab coding here. And to do so, we're simply gonna provide the prompts on how we're gonna build things. Then we're gonna pass it to the plan mode here to basically create a task list on how the AI agent here is gonna perform the task. Then we're gonna pass the task list here, the instructions to the large language model to build the applications. Then we're going to test out the applications using the browser agents that we just talked about, basically have it to generate a report on what things did well, and basically continue to cycle through until we have a perfect application built. So pretty much that's what we're gonna cover in this video. So with that being said, if you're interested, let's get into it. All right, so to get started with the Google anti-gravity, first thing first, we're gonna download this on our operating system. So in this case, I'm gonna download this on my Mac OS. And once I download this, open the applications, here is navigating me to the onboarding session. So I'm just gonna follow this, setting up import from VS Code settings. Now, in terms of the editor themes, I'm just gonna choose the import themes that we have, which is the solarized light, and click on Nest. Here, in terms of the anti-gravity agents, we're just gonna choose the recommended, which is the agent-assisted development. And here, in terms of configurations, I'm just gonna use the default one here, and click on Nest. All right, so once we set up with the onboarding process, here is basically our anti-gravity co-editor here. So one of the main feature from anti-gravity is the agent manager. So here, if you want to access the agent manager, simply just gonna do command E, or you can click on the open agent manager right here. And here you can see this will basically navigate us to the agent manager. So basically what this agent manager does, think of it like an orchestrator, which will help us to orchestrate multiple agents running at the same time. So for example, here you can see we have different workspace that we have created inside of our agent manager. For example, we have our main website, we have our bookkeeping applications, and here we can also be able to add a new one here by simply just clicking on the open workspace right here. So what we're gonna do here is I can be able to open a new conversation. For example, I can be able to use the context here to reference any files or folders inside of our projects. I can also be able to attach any files or images we have. And simply, I can also be able to change the conversation mode. For example, if we wanna do a plan mode, if we wanna do a fast mode like direct executions, right? And also we can change different models. For example, we can use Gemini 3 Pro and also Claude as well as GPT as well. So that we're not limited to the specific model that the Gemini provides. So in this case, I'm just going to um, mention a prompt here saying that please help me to look through the entire code base and try to understand everything and give me a rundown on what is currently going on with this application. So I'm just gonna provide a simple prompt here, try to have it to index our code base. So I'm just going to submit this request and let it do this thing. And while it's doing that, I also want to create a new conversation here with the Eric type website. So here I'm just going to say, based on the uh, index.html here, so based on this page, I want you to examine this page and try to understand what are some areas that we can improve to improve the overall high conversion rate on this landing page. So once we have a prompt, we're just gonna send this request. And at the same time, I can also create a new conversation and be able to have another conversation with the same workspace that I have. For example, here I can be able to provide a prompt that I wrote, and this is basically a context on what are the information that we need to be able to have them to create a better version of the website. So what I wanna do here is that I wanna say, Based on this prompt right here that I have, I want you to do a research online to find out what are some themes, what are some UI themes that we can use to copy and be able to improve our current website design. And I also want you to open the browser here 
to navigate to this website and be able to take some screenshots and see and be able to do a comparison. All right, so now you can see that this is the prompt, not a perfect prompt, but we're just gonna submit this request and see how Gemini handle this. So while Gemini process this, one of the feature from Gemini and Gravity here is basically having the ability to open the browser and analyze the changes. So for example, here you can see that it's gonna create a to-do list. So here you can see on the right, which is our UI theme research and comparison. And what it does first is gonna understand the prompt, right? And also try to analyze the current website by opening the website browser. And as we speak, you can see that it opens the website browser and basically you can see that it's gonna taking some screenshots and try to analyze the entire website. So let's wait for a bit until it fully analyzed this. All right, so after it has analyzed the entire website, here you can see that these are the things that it captured. And here is basically the research that's gonna do, right? So it has analyzed the entire website by taking the screenshots. And now it's gonna do the research on the UI for the themes like the enterprise or the high ticket sales and try to select the top candidates here to make the decision. So while I was doing that, I'm also gonna jump back to another conversation with another agent. In this case, the bookkeeping applications that we have been working on. And here you can see that this is the current status right now, right? So you can see that it has complete these things. And here is basically the project overview that it has understand. And now what we can do here is I'm going to have a new conversation with this AI agent by basically saying that, can you be able to open the browser here and be able to log in with the following credentials? And I'm just going to provide the credential. And basically what I wanted to do is to, I want you to log into this application, take a screenshot of the dashboard, and also take a screenshot of all the sub pages that we have inside of the authenticated account. And after that, I also want you to play around with the match page where user can be able to match the transactions with receipts and see if those features are working. And if not, then please make sure to log them down exactly what are the problems. And based on the user experience, how can we be able to improve a better UX for this application? And here I'm just gonna have Gemini here to send this request and let it do its thing. All right, so while it's doing that, let's also check back with the Eric Tech website. So right here, you can see that it has done the research for the UI themes. And here you can see that it has completed the research and the comparison task. And now if I were to navigate to the website, here you can see that this is what it looks like. So you can see we have our Amazon, we have our Microsoft, and here we also have our call to actions. And also we have our education footer. And here is basically the light themes. We can choose the light themes here. And this is basically our light theme right here, okay? So overall, you can see the style here, the theme looks much more better compared to the last one. Now, whilst doing that, let's also check back with the bookkeeping applications. And we can see here that it in fact did open the application in the browser and try to navigate to different parts of the applications, like the receipt page you can see here. And after it takes some screenshots, it will also navigate to the transaction page. And after everything's done, it will basically try to analyze everything. And eventually uh, it should be able to generate a plan based on what we have here. So here you can see it generates a detailed report with the screenshots and recommendations in the UX recommendation review. So let's take a look at what this generate for the UX review doc. All right, so here you can see that inside of this review report, you can see we have a bunch of screenshots for each pages, like receipts, statements, and match pages. And here you can see that inside of our findings, we have all the findings that we find for each page, as well as the problems, the recommendations. And basically we can also be able to add comments onto this report to basically have it to do a revision of the report and be able to continue from there. All right, so, so far we have one over is the agent manager on how we can be able to have the agent manager here to orchestrate different AI agents running in the background. And also the browser mode, which we can have our AI agent here to open the browser for our applications and try to verify or analyze the changes that we have inside of our application. So now what I want to tell about is how we can be able to use different large language model. For example, here you can see we have a new prompt and here we can choose our AI agents or in this case, our large language model to be able to have a different model here to process our request. So in this case, I'm just gonna send this request. And the goal here is basically adding a new section called project section inside of our static landing page. All right, so eventually here, you can see that it has added this feature for the feature project section inside of a website with all three video demo cards are working correctly with the hover effects. So right now, if I were to look at the preview, this is the screen recording that it has made. So if you scroll down, this is the feature. And if I were to scroll down, this is the feature, but it doesn't show the uh, image from the Google Drive link. So in this case, I'm just gonna come back. So here, I'm just gonna say that the current cards for the projects does not show any images. So please make sure to add the following after the image URL to be able to have it to display the image. And basically this is the slash view that I was talking about to basically add it to the each thumbnail that we have. 
and I'm just going to send this request and see how it works. And in the meantime here, I'm also gonna um, copy the readme file for each project that I have. So for project one, this is the readme file. And for the project two, this is the readme file. And then for the project three, this is the readme file. And please make sure to update the right information for the project description for each cards. So in this case, I'm just going to send this request to Claude 4.5 here to then have it to update the project cards. So in this case, we can see it's gonna process this request and let's wait for a bit until it fully processes this. So now you can see that it has done the verification for the project. And here, if we will scroll down, you can see that if I were to open the application, this is what it looks like. So this is our static page, which we have our feature projects. So this is basically our three projects that we have. We will also, if I were to click on this, you can see it navigate us to the right projects inside of our YouTube channel. So it also has the descriptions for the projects, the skill sets, the tools that we use, and all those kind of things. Now, before we jump into the next section, let me give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, TestBright. TestBright is an AI agent that's specifically for software testing. With the release of the TestBright MCP, you get a chance to use the TestBright MCP inside of your coding IDE, like clock code, cursor, windsurf, and more. With simply just adding the configurations inside of the MCP settings, you can use it right away. With the TestBright MCP, it not only understands what you want, because it first read through the code base, understand the documentations, as well as validates the results that your agent wrote. And it is doing that by automatically generating the test plan for the PRD documentations and producing the test cases and test coverage without any manual inputs. And then from there, it will basically start to execute the test and then be able to send the reports back to you by telling you exactly what's broken. With normal coding accuracy of 42% from other coding agents, we can be able to improve that with TestBright MCP with the feature delivery accuracy of 93%. So if you're interested to try it out, you can check out this video that I made, or you can check out the link in the description for more details. Now, one little cool feature that I realized from Antigravity is the generate command message. So here you can see that for the source control, let's say if I were to delete a bunch of like end-to-end -end testings or testing files or images for the test results, I can actually be able to click on generate a commit message based on the changes that we have made. And what's really cool is that before I have to use AI here to you know generate this based on the on-stage changes, I have to write it down. But this one, this time, is gonna give us a shortcut button here that can help us to be more specific exactly on what are the changes that we have made for the on-stage changes. So here you can see delete all the stale results, the reports, and the associate tests, as well as the helper files for the end-to-end -end testing. So in this case, I'm just gonna commit this change and push the change onto the branch here. You can see that it has our uh, commit message that we just created with AI. All right, so pretty much that's it for the review on the anti-gravity from Google. And in this video, we went over how to use the agent manager here, basically try to spin up multiple sub agents running at the same time in the background, right? We can be able to have AI agent here working on the same projects or a different projects at the same time. And the other one here is we can also be able to use the browser agent from Google Anti-Gravity, which can be able to navigate to the application in a Google Chrome browser. And it can also be able to verify the changes, taking screenshots and try to identify where the issue is and how to better fix it. And lastly, we also went over how to select different models. For example, we're not limited to the Gemini models that we have, but we also have the option to choose Claude and also GBT model as well. And lastly, we also went over a development workflow here, simply providing the prompts, and then we pass it to the anti-gravity using the plan mode here to basically generate a to-do list on how the AI agent here is gonna perform the task. Then it's going to basically execute the task using the model of our choice. And then eventually we're going to use the browser agent here to test it and generate a report. And eventually we can be able to take this report and continue to prompt it and refine our application. So pretty much that's what I showed you in this video. And if you do find value in this video, please make sure to like this video, consider subscribing for more content like this. But with that being said, I'll see you in the next video.